No, it's not clickbait. I did get in trouble three times, but if you're looking for someone like some good juicy story, it's not really going to happen this video. I will explain the three times that I got in trouble in school and kind of give you my side of the story and what the other side of the story was claiming. They're mostly kind of funny because you're like, really, this is how teachers are getting in trouble these days. But it's true. It happened to me. And I want to explain them to you because they're just kind of weird. They had no effect of why I left the classroom. Well, let's just get onto them because I know that's what you want to hear. So the first time I got in trouble in teaching, and it was probably my earlier years, third or fifth year teaching, was we had our like review. So your administrators would come in and just kind of review you and stuff like this. And I remember I was a couple of years in because I started to get confident in my teaching. I was like, all right, I'm starting to get this. Like I know what I'm doing. And I was teaching algebra one. Once you have your math degree, algebra one, like it's actually very difficult to teach because you have to get yourself onto the level of your students. And sometimes when you've taken so much more math or you've taught upper level courses, it's hard to put yourself in the framework of your own students. I knew what I was doing. Like I had everything prepared. I would plan out stuff. I would just not go through the time of writing out detailed plans. I basically just kind of winged it. And if I remember correctly, this was also my time when I was a wrestling coach. So my time was like very, very minimal. I was teaching, then doing wrestling, like, and I wrestled basically it was like a year round program. I mean, yeah, we had our season, but we did off season tournaments on the weekends. Like it was a full-time gig. So the reason I got in trouble was I just didn't have any lesson plans. Like I would just show up. I knew what I was going to teach. I'd look over the information and I would just kind of wing it. And that was not good. That was not up to par. At that moment in the time uh, of our district, we had to have provide written out lesson plans. And again, I was a little bit younger and I was able to get by, but I would definitely say that I didn't really have a foundation of the importance of writing out lesson plans for my students, but I would say I will agree that that was a good reason for me to get in trouble because I fully do support having out a written out lesson plan and not so much a detail like you do as like a student teacher, but really thinking through the problems and how the students are going to react to them and having more than just you know, a couple of problems that students are going to do or what you're going to teach and everything else. So is what it is. I eventually started writing out my lesson plans. And then as I grew as a teacher, the lesson plans actually became more important to me. I didn't even actually care about what the district wanted. I prepared lesson plans. So therefore I could create them for students to be able to follow, you know, online, as well as to help me as a teacher, be able to guide myself throughout the year. So lesson plans actually became more important to me once I truly understood the importance of them, because before that point, it was just a, like a check mark for the district. I'm like, oh, here's my lesson plans. It didn't really mean anything to me. And I just did them. They're boring and I hated them. But it was just that dog and pony show that a lot of teachers do if they don't understand how to craft a proper lesson plan without taking hours and hours of their day to be effective. So I got in trouble. I fixed it. It's okay. Now, the next one it's kind of an odd one. You might not believe it, but it's true. The next time I got written up as a teacher, I had a camera in the middle of my classroom. The reason I got needs improvement on there because it was possible that a student behind the camera, because it was like in the middle, there are students behind to the sides. It was possible that if I was teaching at a certain part of the board and a student was on a certain part of the classroom that they might not be able to see because the video camera was an obstruction. Now, I never had a student complain, and if students were outside, I never had a problem with them getting up and moving to a different part of the classroom or you know, moving the camera if I wasn't recording. Never had a problem with that. But still, I got it dinged on my evaluation. So I did not get a high-performing evaluation that year because I had a camera in the middle of my classroom. And it didn't matter why I had a camera in the middle of my classroom, that I was recording these videos, uploading them on YouTube and doing all this for my, you know, for my students so they could watch any lecture they wanted to online. I think it was like one of those, they needed something to <laughs> mark me down on. They didn't want to give everybody like high performing or satisfactory reviews. So that was one that I got dinged on. And then the last one. Now this one's actually kind of funny. I never thought it was actually be possible. And I didn't really get in trouble, trouble with it, but I got a warning. We'll put it that way. So I was in the classroom teaching and all of a sudden my principal comes in with two district personnel and I'm like, oh crap. Like it wasn't like the, like they're coming in to like, look at my classroom, like evaluate me. Like they had a look on their face where I'm like, uh oh, this seems like I'm in trouble. Now, again, I'm, I never did anything to warrant anything that'd be like in serious trouble. So I was a little bit confused, but I was also still like kind of scared. Like, is there something I'm not aware of that I could be in trouble on? Like their faces just were stoic and it just, it seemed odd because I, I had a good rapport with my principal. So when I would see her, we were usually always smiling with each other and everything else, but this was different. So they pulled me out of the classroom 
And they're like, can we see your district computers because we're having some issues? And I'm like, sure, okay. And it made me think, I'm like, is there something that maybe a student uploaded to a video like they're accusing me of or uploaded to one of the computers and they're accusing me of? Like, I, I didn't know, but I was confused and concerned what they were gonna find. So they go on our computers because we had like four computers in our classroom and they go on the computers and I just kind of continue teaching and they pull up this folder and it was my, my videos, my YouTube videos. And the problem was for whatever reason, I'm not really sure why I did it because usually I would upload my videos using the computer using that computer, I'd take them from the flash drive, upload them to the computer, upload them to YouTube after school, you know, sometimes anywhere from 40 to a hundred videos a day. Cause I was recording so many videos and then I would delete them all once they're up to YouTube, I'd delete them. But for whatever reason, I like forgot to delete these videos or I just was like, Hey, you know what? I'll save these. Cause maybe they were like different videos I might want to use later. But the problem was I took up all those videos, took up all the server space. So therefore nobody could save anything because it was shared drive. The whole school had like a shared drive. And so my videos, I wouldn't say crashed our system. That's a pretty good way to say that like you crash them, but like, but yeah, nobody could like save or do anything on our shared drive because all my videos had completely filled up the whole drive. Once I figured it out, you know, I got a warning from them. Like you can't save any of your personal stuff on the shared drive. Obviously it's for like the school stuff. So don't do it again or you will be in trouble. So it was a stern warning, but it was no problem because I was just like, oh, I shouldn't have done that anyway. So I just deleted them all and never did it again. So I was good. And that was it. That's really about as tough as I've been. I know it's not as exciting. Um, some of them are a little funny, especially to me or maybe some other teachers. You know, I've had the superintendent of schools come into my classroom. He goes up to my board because we had to have the objective of the, our lesson plan on our board. So he reads my objective. And he says, that's not a good objective that you should have a better objective. And this is the superintendent of schools. So I'm like, you know, fair enough. Thank you. And he takes that information to the principal. The principal has a conversation with me and I'm like, whatever else. Like, okay, yes, I get it. You know, I can improve blah, blah, blah. But then I'm like, wait a minute. I didn't actually create that objective. And I go and look into our district lesson plans. Cause our district would actually provide us with like a framework of like the objective, whatever else. And they told us to use the objectives from the district and put them on our board. And that's exactly what I did. So the superintendent was basically just, you know, saying, hey, that's not a good objective, but it wasn't even mine. It was actually the districts of his own personnel that provided it. But that's it, guys. Didn't really get in trouble. I did have some embarrassing moments. And if you want to know those embarrassing moments, then check out the next video I have for you here. Cheers.